Paula Lenstra calling to you from uh, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, and just as a quick, quick reminder, if you can't hear anything, uh, click communicate at the top of your screen um, and then integrated voice conference and join. Um, and uh, you can uh, chat at any point by clicking the chat box. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to just uh, chat them in at any point. Uh, so today we are talking about how to add physical activity to library health programs. And we have uh, two great presentations um, from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and Sonoma County, California. Uh, and just by way of introduction, this is uh, the fourth uh, webinar that we've had on movement-based programs in public libraries. Um, and uh, the past webinars are on YouTube. We've looked at um, outdoor backpack programs um, and bicycle programs, parachute play, yoga. Um, and if, if you're doing movement in your libraries, uh, we'd love to feature you. Uh, reach out to me, um, and uh, we'd love to share your story. Uh, uh, and also, if your library moves, if you have movement-based programs, we'd love to also include you on the dynamic map that we're building of public libraries in the U.S. and Canada that support movement and physical activity through programs and services. Um, so let's, uh, let's join together. Uh, and um, I'm going to now go to Jamie's slides. Uh, bear with me. I have these set up. Uh, so Jamie, I'm going to turn things over to you. Um, and I'm making you presenter so that you can uh, share your, so you can move through your slides at the pace that you want to. Um, and I'm going to turn off my mic. And so, Jamie, uh, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and introduce yourself and take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Jamie Anderson. I am a Collection Services Division Manager at Sonoma County Library in Santa Rosa, California. Um, I just want to start off by thanking everyone for their time today. Um, I think this topic is a really important one. Um, so a brief introduction about um, our county. Sonoma County is located in Northern California, about 55 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Our county enjoys over 50 state and regional parks, 67 miles of rugged Pacific Coast beaches. Uh, we also have a towering redwood forest, over 400 wineries, and a thriving art scene. Uh, Sonoma County Library specifically um, was originally formed in 1975, and our county library system serves um, just under 500,000 residents throughout the county at 15 branches, including our central Santa Rosa Library, 10 regional libraries, and two rural stations. We have about 230 employees here and our residents borrow over 2.5 million items per year. So the story of how we identify physical activity as a need in our county um, kind of goes back to 2013, when Sonoma County conducted a large-scale community health needs assessment. This assessment was conducted with focus groups, um, interviews, telephone surveys, and so forth to really identify critical areas for health improvement. And one of the key findings in the assessment was that healthy eating and physical fitness were a number one priority area for our residents. Uh, in addition to this assessment, there was also a second report that came out called the Portrait of Sonoma County. And this was a critical report published in 2014, which drew connections between life expectancy, education, and income. And it found that health and well-being disparities in the county were largely preventable through education. Um, this particular report was really interesting to me because it actually drilled down to the zip code um, and compared, you know, neighborhood by neighborhood life expectancies. Um, and the finding that these kinds of discrepancies were basically preventable through education really caught the attention of our library. We thought there's something there that we can help with. Um, so in addition to these reports, the library had also recently undergone a strategic planning process ourselves, where we sought extensive community feedback over a 12-month period. And we had just come out with our own five-year strategic plan. One of the objectives in that document um, was to create a coordinated, comprehensive literacy service program and to develop partnerships with community-based organizations and government agencies to collaboratively provide services that we would struggle to provide 
on our own. So with all of these goals in mind, we decided to write a grant. Um, we ended up securing a $30,000 um, federal grant to kick off a year-long program of health education classes in the fiscal years of 2016 and 2017. We called the series Healthy Living at Your Library, and you can see our branding here on the left. We offered, over the course of a year, over 150 free educational classes and events countywide at each of our library branches. And the focus was on not just physical fitness, but also uh, nutrition and healthy cooking. So the series was supported by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act, which in our state was administered by the California uh, State Librarians. The grant was a very competitive process with public libraries up and down the state pitching their ideas for funding. And we were really thrilled that ours was one of the projects selected. Um, we were one of 30 grants awarded from a pool of 65 proposals. Um, the purpose of the Healthy Living Series is to empower and equip Sonoma County families, particularly low-income households, with information, resources, and tools necessary for healthy living. Um, this is a list of the fitness classes that we offer. It's not a complete list, but um, you get the idea. So <clears throat> we did focus on some yoga and gentle classes that we felt would be attractive to seniors. Um, so for example, we offered a yoga class um, that specifically was about transforming your posture and improving your posture, aligning neck and shoulders to really pay an attention um, it included stretches to open the chest and exercises to tone upper back muscles, that kind of thing. Um, we offered a gentle strength and stretch class, which sounds exactly like what it says. Um, it was just basically training to promote strength, endurance, and range of motion, very appropriate for older adults or all ages. Um, a class about increasing balance and flexibility, um, we did some core strengthening classes, some cardio kickboxing, um, which was basically a cardio workout with jabs, hooks, and kicks. Very exciting. Um, we did low impact aerobic classes. We did uh, interval training, which was pretty intense cardio. And then we offered Zumba classes. Um, as I mentioned, um, another important component of our program were non-physical classes. This is a listing of some of those courses. Um, nutrition education was a big push for us, a large component. Um, meditation, mindfulness, and stress reduction classes were offered. Um, we did a healing foods class, which was basically a two-hour class on whole foods nutrition basics, including shopping strategies, eating well on a budget, foods to add and avoid, and it included a demo of making a smoothie and energy balls, and samples were provided. Um, we offered in the wintertime a class about winter vegetables beyond broccoli. The picture here on this slide is from that particular class. Um, so this was how to select, store, and cook a variety of winter vegetables and bring out their best flavor. You can see here it was very hands-on. A lot of food was brought in from um, market. Um, it included recipes that were given out as handouts, cooking techniques, and lots of samples of eating. Um, we offered an Ayurveda class. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's a body science that treats symptoms naturally, analyzes your mental and physical type, and then tailors remedies to fit your individual needs. Um, and then we also have some really short, like 30-minute classes, like these last two listed here, uh, Rethink Your Drink, which was um, teaching the importance of drinking water and avoiding sugary beverages, um, and then what's on a label or reading and understanding food labels, um, which, again, is exactly what it sounds like. We literally had different cans and different foods from grocery stores, and the instructor went over how to um, interpret and read those labels. Um, so, obviously, we couldn't do all of this ourselves. Um, 
the series, uh, the Healthy Living series, also did include uh, free medical screenings for diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, and body mass index. So that was another component of our grant, and the screenings were conducted by medical professionals and gave um, you know, residents or patrons an idea of where they stood with their own personal health. Um, the partner that we used for the medical screening was St. Joseph's Health, which is uh, one of the logos you see here on this slide. Um, we also partnered with our own county Department of Health Services to hold um, informational classes on SNAP Ed resources that are available to people. Um, formerly known as the Federal Food Stamp Program, uh, you may or may not know SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And SNAP Ed is the nutrition promotion and obesity prevention component of their program. So SNAP Ed educates people on how to cook healthy meals on the average daily allowance for a SNAP beneficiary, which is $4.15 per day. Not a lot of money. Um, we learned through this process that 10 of our 15 library branches were located in SNAP Ed qualifying areas, which meant that they would conduct classes in those libraries for free. Um, the value of those free classes were about $5,400 on top of our LSTA grant. Um, by offering the classes for free, all of our classes, we were hoping to basically level the playing field for families who perhaps couldn't afford to take a cooking class or join a gym, but they were interested in learning how to lead healthier lives. Um, so again, this is a list of the different partners. We uh, leveraged many community partners in the nonprofit sector, as well as various county agencies and health professionals. Um, many of these groups were ones that we had not collaborated with before. Um, through these connections, we were able to deliver a suite of classes to the public that was interactive, engaging, and fun. Um, we also were able to attract new users to the library with this program. Um, I will add that securing these partnerships was one of the most time-consuming parts of the planning process. Uh, we had to find the right person to talk to. Uh, we had to reach agreements about our shared goals, um, our commitment level, pricing. Uh, we had to sign a memorandum of understanding with each group that outlined um, what the roles and responsibilities were for each party. Um, so it did take quite a bit of time. A representative from each of these groups also joined our library staff to form a task force with a focus on creating a marketing strategy to reach those low-income households that we were trying to target. Each partner organization cross-advertised our events in their respective newsletters, email blasts, uh, printed material, and social media. Uh, one example, we had a full-page ad in the Santa Rosa Junior College course catalog for both their fall and spring semesters. We also advertised through local health action chapters, medical centers, farmer markets, health fairs, senior citizen homes, and low-income housing apartments. Uh, another component of our grant that I haven't mentioned yet was to increase our library staff's competencies in delivering consumer health services to the public. We decided to offer a customized two-hour training class provided by the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. This class was delivered to our branch managers. And finally, we also used a portion of our grant money to boost our collection, purchasing books and DVDs on health and wellness related topics. Um, we mainly purchased cookbooks and workout videos with this money. So in addition to the classes, which is the meat and potatoes of our program, we also designed a Healthy Living Club card. Patrons were encouraged to sign up to attend any three Healthy Living classes, check out one health book or fitness DVD, and complete a personal fitness challenge. Uh, patrons who completed these steps and turned in their completed club card were entered into a raffle to win a prize. Um, so our library foundation funded the 36 prizes that we gave away last year. Um, we gave away things like an Instant Pot, yoga sets, and gift cards to local kitchen stores or local sports stores.
And these are a couple of our prize winners uh, collecting their prizes. Uh, as with any grant, we have very specific outcomes that we were striving toward. Um, so at the end of the 12 month period, um, we came to the following outcome conclusion. So we had 921 people attended um, any class. Uh, we had 77% of attendees that came to a physical fitness class. They committed to doing the exercises at home. 88% uh, indicated that the class helped them achieve a personal health goal. Again, we didn't dictate what that goal was. It was a personal thing. They didn't share that with us. And then 92% of attendees that came to a healthy eating class reported a commitment to increasing their fruit and vegetable consumption. So lessons learned. Um, our most popular classes tended to be those gentle physical movement classes um, and cooking education. Uh, the high energy like HIIT and aerobic classes um, were not as strongly attended. And I can't really speak to why there were a lot of theories that we had about that. Um, but for sure, you know, the, the low impact and the more gentle classes were uh, more heavily attended in our accounting. Some of our classes were not as well attended as we hoped. Um, the average class size was six people. However, we had some classes with 23 to 25 people and a few classes where no one showed up, sadly. Um, some space considerations that we ran into when we were working with our various partners to schedule these classes. Um, some of them indicated uh, a maximum number of participants that could be in their class, say 10 people or 15 people or 25 people. Um, so we honored that. Um, some of them indicated that they needed a staff person or a volunteer in the room, the entire class, to be like an assistant. And they required certain other things to be in the room, access to running water, garbage can, and so forth. Um, but for the most part, with our physical fitness classes, the partner provider um, came in with all the necessary equipment, which is nice. Uh, some of our libraries have really small meeting rooms. And so um, th there was a concern that came up a couple of times that, uh, you know, let's say 12 people were, were going to show up, but the room was um, so small and the physical activity required, you know, a certain radius around one's body to be comfortable in the room. So um, the, some of our partners indicated, you know, oh, the room is such that we really think we can only have eight people in the class. Um, so those were just some considerations we had. We had one library that actually doesn't have a meeting room at all. And uh, we decided to hold that class at an off-site location that was actually a museum. We also considered holding it outdoors in the parking lot. There were some concerns there about safety and liability. Um, a couple other lessons about scheduling. Um, we did have a few challenges, as I'm sure you're familiar with, with any kind of events or programs that you schedule. Um, you know, there were there were cancellations. There were a few instructors that didn't show up or didn't um, touch base with the branch manager ahead of time regarding room requirements and things like that. So um, most of all, it went smoothly. But there were a few hiccups like that. Um, we also struggled a little bit with the best time of day to hold the classes and the best day of the week to hold the classes. Um, played around, did a lot of experimentation with that. Obviously, um, evenings were better. Um, at the time that the, the classes were being offered in 2016 and 17, our libraries actually had pretty limited hours. We were only open 40 hours a week, and we were closed all day on Monday. Um, only open one evening in the week. That was Wednesday evening. And as you can imagine, Wednesday evening was like, you know, the first um, time that everybody was trying to book all of their library programs and events. So it was not possible for the healthy living classes to always be on, say, a Wednesday evening. Uh, regarding liability, we did talk to our partners about um, having like an activity waiver or a release form. Um, fortunately, our partners were already, you know, conducting these classes throughout the community, so they were familiar with this, this need and the concern that we had. 
um, you know, if someone were to unfortunately get injured or fall or anything like that while on our premises or in the class. Um, so for the most part, our partners came in um, to the class with paperwork for attendees to sign right off the bat, and they were, you know, not allowed to participate in the class essentially um, until they signed off, you know, on the on the waiver form. Uh, another lesson learned was probably my fault. I really should have put a lot more attention into a more solid marketing plan and uh, didn't adequately budget for advertising um, as part of our grant, at least. So that became very clear towards the beginning of our 12-month uh, cycle with the grant. Um, so we just did the best that we could, but I definitely encourage you to consider the marketing and advertising that would be required to really make your community aware of classes like this so they can um, get the word out and be well attended. I've already mentioned um, lessons regarding aligning with our partners. We did have um, a couple partners where you know, our role and mission in the community, they solidly understood and we understood theirs and everything like, you know, the stars just matched up, it was great. Um, we had one other partner that comes to mind that um, we kind of struggled a little bit with. It seemed like um, they, their interests and intentions behind offering the classes were a little bit different than ours. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. And then finally, uh, seasonal factors. Um, again, because our series lasted an entire year, we went through you know fall, winter, spring, summer, and we found attendance was definitely better on you know spring and summer like days. You know, nice weather outside, not a rainy, cold, damp day. Um, and we also did quite a bit of a marketing push right around uh, New Year's when many people are thinking about their health and maybe possibly wanting to make a change. Um, so if this is something you're considering, I would urge you to try and time it um, around the holidays and around the New Year because that seems to be very effective for us. Okay, um, moving on. So when our grant cycle was completed, we decided to continue using the Healthy Living Act logo and branding uh, that our own graphics department had created for this grant. And we decided to increase the scope to include more classes specifically targeted for children, which wasn't you know, a big focus the first year. Uh, so this year we're offering fitness and movement activities for little ones with a partner, a local partner that's called My Gym. They have a mobile gym. We're also um, on the nutrition side, we're also offering classes um, for kids called Kids Can Cook, which teaches them how to make healthy after school snacks, and a class called Mindful Mini, which is a yoga and meditation class for young children. And then on the adult side, uh, we worked on a new partnership with our Sonoma County Regional Parks Department to offer regional parks discovery packs, which include a backpack filled with a parking pass good for free parking at all of the 56 parks in our county. And a park map, trail activities, hiking tips, wildfire guides, and other information to just help patrons enjoy self-guided adventures in the park. Um, this discovery pack program was developed really to promote community health and well-being by increasing opportunities for residents to visit and learn about their parks. And I've noticed a lot of public libraries are um, circulating packs like this. So in conclusion, um, I'll just wrap up by sharing with you some of the patron comments that came through on our um, feedback form that we uh, collected at the end of each Healthy Living class. Patron said, quote, uh, well organized and a lot of material covered in 1.5 hours. Another patron said, fabulous presentation, yummy food. Um, another one said, encourage you to do more physical education classes at the library. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, uh, great, Jamie. Um, and I, I do apologize. I'm not sure what uh, has happened with our other presenter, Elizabeth Ross. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of her. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll just take a question and answer uh, now. So um, 
Uh, does anyone have any questions for Jamie? I have I have a lot of questions, but uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you if you um, would like to put a question in the chat box, um, and if you don't see the chat box, if you go to your upper right hand corner of your screen, you should see a cartoon bubble with the chat icon. And if you click on that, uh, that will open up the chat, and you can uh, type in uh, any questions that you may have about um, the healthy living at your library program. Okay, um, so uh, we have a question here. Um, so the question is about uh, waivers that were signed. Um, and so the question is, did the, did the presenters uh, provide their own waivers, or did the library develop uh, waivers for the, for the classes? Um, we relied on the presenters um, because they already had, you know, waivers that had gone through, I guess, their legal review and that they were using in other venues. Um, so we did not come up with our own original waiver. We um, just piggybacked on what the particular partner or presenter uh, brought. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jamie. Um, and I'm just uh, putting a link here in the chat box. Um, I've actually been collecting examples of uh, waiver forms that libraries use. Um, uh, now, just to go back to uh, the beginning, uh, now there's so many libraries around the country doing these types of programs. Um, that uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, we might as well learn from each other. Um, and so there's lots of examples of uh, waivers of liability forms that libraries are using uh, to kind of make sure that they are protected legally in, in, in case of uh, injury. But just along those lines, Jamie, was there ever any issue with all of these programs where uh, a participant did um, injure themselves or uh, did, that, did that ever occur or any, any type of uh, injury or medical issues you had to deal with and associated with kind of having food or physical activity programs at your library? Right, um, no, fortunately nothing uh, to that magnitude occurred. So we were lucky. Yeah, great, great, thank you. Other questions for Jamie? And while you're uh, writing up your questions, I do want to apologize. I think we've had some technical difficulties today. I got a few emails from people saying that they were having trouble getting in, um, so I'm not sure why uh, why the software uh, wasn't working um, well today, but uh, apologies if anyone has had any technical difficulties. Um, and the webinar will also be recorded, um, and so um, I'll be making the, the webinar available to, to people who uh, may have had any technical difficulties. Okay, so another question. Um, uh, did, uh, so this is a good question. Uh, so you, you talked a lot about working with uh, presenters from outside the library. Were there any um, library staff who, who presented uh, the topics or programs themselves? Um, or were they all done by outside presenters? Yeah, good question. Um, they were all done by outside presenters. Um, once we started the program, I actually started to hear from some of our own library staff who were interested in being a presenter themselves. You know, they maybe had uh, a skill they wanted to share that tied in with our um, focus, or they referred me to other people, friends or colleagues or whatever in the community that they knew that they thought would be um, a good addition to the program. Um, so I did get a lot of good contacts from that, but again, our, our program was grant funded, so it was scoped very specifically with a certain budget and no more, at least the, that first year. Now it's kind of been absorbed into our regular operating defense budget. Um, so, you know, in retrospect, we could have maybe surveyed our own staff to try to identify anybody that could have um, been a good fit to be a presenter. Um, we had one person in particular who actually, you know, worked on the side for the Sonoma County YMCA, which was one of our biggest partners. 
and she got very excited when she heard about the grant and wanted to you know, participate. I did explore that a little bit with our library administration and there was, if I'm remembering right, there was a little concern around um, basically conflict of interest, um, hiring somebody and paying them, you know, in addition to them working here 40 hours a week, they also wanted to come in as an individual contractor. Um, through the YMCA. So we, we decided to just not go down that road. Um, but I think it's an interesting thing to, to consider. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Um, I see another question here. Um, uh, you had discussed some publicity issues. Uh, can, you, can you discuss a little bit more about uh, some of the publicity issues that you encountered um, uh, in, in the rollout of this uh, program series? Yeah, um, for sure. So at our library, we have a graphic artist who I relied on to help um, develop all of our flyers, um, announcing our events and classes. Um, that uh, graphics department also translates anything um, that's going out into Spanish because we have a large uh, Latino population here. Um, so I worked with that person quite a bit. Um, we also have a webmaster that oversees all of our website updates and our social media posts. So I had to coordinate with them quite a bit, wanted to try and you know, push this out both in paper and online. Um, and as I mentioned in the presentation, um, I asked each of our partners to basically do the same thing. So we shared all of our marketing materials with all of the partners, whether it was their class or another partner's class. Um, and we asked them, and they did um, share it, even, you know, the paper flyers, say, in their offices, as well as through email newsletters and things like that. Um, and then I really relied on our branch managers um, to publicize locally in their individual communities, as they do for all of their uh, local events, because I didn't have, you know, all of those contacts, and I wasn't as familiar with um, the best places to go. So a lot of it got pushed down through our branch managers whereby they, you know, submitted the events to their local newspapers or their local radio stations. Um, so we tried to hit it from a lot of different directions and it was really a big group effort. Okay, great, uh, Jamie. Um, and I don't see any other questions uh, that have come in. Um, and uh, so at this point, um, uh, I see Elizabeth is here, um, and uh, apologies, I think we may have had, uh, it, it's probably my fault, I didn't communicate well about the, the time zone difference, um, but in any case, I'm really glad that Elizabeth uh, Ross is here from the Nashville Public Library. Um, and I'm, uh, Elizabeth, if you want to go ahead and try talking just to make sure your audio is working. Sure. Can you hear me? Oh, perfectly. Okay, so I am now making you presenter, which means that you have full control of advancing your slides. Um, and just whenever you're ready, Elizabeth, go ahead. Um, and if you have any questions for Elizabeth while she's talking, feel free to put them into the chat box. Um, and then we should have a, a few minutes at the end for question and answer. But go ahead whenever you're ready, Elizabeth. Sure. Thank you so much. No, I apologize to everyone. I did. I was practicing and then uh, saw the email and had the time zone wrong and I'm very embarrassed. But here I am and let's, let's get going. So I'm here to talk about our initiative at uh, Nashville Public Library, Be Well MTL. My name is Elizabeth Roth and I coordinate um, this program. So taking a look at Nashville and Davidson County, we're located in Middle Tennessee. We have um, a very growing population. We also have a very diverse uh, population, both racially and ethnically. We have a number of people who are foreign born as well as seniors, and then um, looking at people living in poverty, about 15%. But when you look um, zip code to zip code, really there are um, you know, areas where over half of the population is living, is living in poverty. Um, so National Public Library, we have about 21 locations um, serving this uh, population. We're seeing about 4 million library visits each year. And we have a, a public library foundation that helps to um, increase the number of programming that we offer, both uh, new ideas and being able to support and fund in that way. And so the Health and Wellness Initiative, um, BUL and MPL, really wanted to be in line with what our the health priorities of where we live. Um, so Nashville actually, or Tennessee, has uh, some pretty poor health outcomes, ranking 45th overall health um, in the country. 
say with the city itself being 45th uh, compared to other larger metropolitan areas, we uh, come out worse with our peer cities or rank worse with our peer cities in health. Um, and two of the things I wanted to focus on for this presentation, um, obviously we're talking about physical activity. So what is the rate of physical inactivity here? And then some other health outcomes related such as high blood pressure, diabetes. And so we see 29% physical inactivity. Um, however, when we break it down by the census data to look at prevalence, you have neighborhoods where over half the population is reporting no exercise in the last 30 days. Um, so how can we meet that need and really target those areas that um, are experiencing these um, also poor health outcomes like high blood pressure. And of course, too, if you looked at this data and you mapped, you know, what is the poverty rate um, in our county, you'd see the same shading areas. Um, so really being intentional with where are we targeting um, our efforts and our money um, to really meet the needs of um, our communities. So we received a grant in early 2016 from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee to support um, us expanding our health and wellness programming throughout the county. Uh, we ended up choosing six target locations based on the data we looked at before and um, seeing where is there, you know, the rates, higher rates of poverty, poor health outcomes, and being very intentional with those efforts. Um, so really we're trying to increase the access um, to free programming, make it easier to get to um, and to participate in and engage people around um, healthy living um, and chances to experiment and try out new things. So we ended up doing, um, when I came on, we ended up doing a neat, little simple needs assessment. What do people uh, want to see? And the number one response was yoga, and that really was across the board. And um, we did have some yoga that existed in, in a few of our branch locations. However, none of the six target branches that I talked about had any yoga going on. And so I actually reached out to a wonderful organization we have locally called Small World Yoga, which provides um, yoga to populations that otherwise wouldn't have access or wouldn't have been able to afford. And through this partnership, we've been able to um, expand a yoga to our six branch locations, some of them offering two classes a week. Uh, we have um, specialized classes, uh, gentle yoga for seniors in our locations that see a larger senior population. So that picture on the top left, you see uh, that group of senior women at our Bordeaux community um, library. And um, those classes are seeing upwards of 20, 25 participants each week. So we've been able now for um, a year and a half to offer weekly yoga um, at those locations. Some of these other photos show our kids yoga. We have a staff person that leads a weekly a yoga class at our main location. And with our grant, we've been able to purchase supplies like blocks um, and mats and wipes and um, really have this mutually beneficial relationship with Small World Yoga where we have um, broadened their audience and then we've also been able to meet the need of our um, library community who wanted yoga. And so this is an example of our flyer showing um, the 16 classes that we now offer weekly um, at a number of our locations. Some another programming that we offer um, gardening um, with children and adults. Uh, we have a seed exchange in our library where you can take out free seeds, which has been going on for a number of years. Um, and then some locations um, complementing that with programming through Master Gardeners um, or other uh, volunteers coming in talking about gardening. And then in this um, past two years, we were approached by Plant the Seed, which is another uh, local organization that does outreach gardening with youth to um, choose two library locations to um, implement after school programming once a week through a grant they got with the mayor's office. And so we, we um, are having this program at two of our target branch locations uh, where they come once a week. They actually installed raised beds on site and the children are maintaining those beds um, and being able to participate in uh, the gardening as well as cooking and all of that. And that's been wonderful because they bring in their own nutrition educators and are utilizing the library space and, and the audience um, as their program participants. 
We've also done um, programming around bicycling, and uh, we have a wonderful group called Walk Bike Nashville here that, um, again, promotes and advocates for cycling and movement and walking around town. And uh, they do free bike rodeos, so they actually bring a trailer and will come to, they've come to a number of our library locations and, um, you know, pull up with a truck and they have bicycles and helmets and they take down a, a course and let the kids run, uh, go through that with the bicycles. Um, and they also do programming for adults, like City Cycling 101, where they come, this class in the photo, they at the branch, they had an indoor class where they had a presentation on, you know, rules of the road, and then everyone got to go outside and go for a ride together um, to practice what they had just learned um, leaving from the library branch. So we've done a lot of work um, with, the, with them as well. And that really is, for me, the, the um, the point I wanted to emphasize is leveraging these partnerships of who exists out in the community that's, you know, engaging people around movement and wellness and then integrating them into the library, either with, you know, programming or using our space to enhance what they're already trying to do. So just some other examples of programming we've offered, Tai Chi, Zumba, different fitness classes. We have a local person who started her own fitness class called Belly Tone, and she's now in a number of our branches. Um, and uh, we have had health fairs at library locations where we incorporate um, uh, like a fitness demo or give it a little try. Um, so doing that as well. And then some of our infrastructure as well. Um, this is a little climbing wall when they redid our children's area of our main library. And um, so taking into consideration movement and physical activity with our buildings as well. Um, and one of our branches that was renovated, they put in a walking path around um, the library to encourage movement. We've done some story walks, or that's in the works to have story walks built, um, especially with land that's shared with our Parks and Rec. Um, so working together with the community centers, Parks and Rec, to um, get people moving. And I wanted to say too that with all of our programming that we do on site um, that's fitness related, we always have people sign physical activity waivers, which isn't a problem at all with adults. Um, they're always willing to sign. However, it can be a challenge with children's programming where um, they, maybe the parents aren't participating um, on site with the program or the children are just there in the after school time. It has been uh, more challenging to get those waivers. But once, for us, once someone signs a waiver, they don't have to sign it again. So for the children, if we can get it once, keep it on file, then they can participate um, in other programs. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to point out some programming we've done outreach style-wise. This is um, our Open Streets event where they close well, the city's open streets were closed three miles of a road, and we had one branch that's situated on this route. And um, we put a table out. We had pop-up um, yoga that day with Small World Yoga. We brought the mats in the street. We also had a pound class, a Zumba class, um, just showing how the library is engaging around health. Um, we're not there just signing up library cards. We were doing all these other activities as well. Um, and then the photo with the table, um, this was at International Day of Yoga, which was in a park. The library had a presence there, too, amongst, you know, those people smelling, selling um, fresh juices and yoga supplies to show our yoga uh, resources at the library, to promote our classes, and to, again, just be a presence there for um, wellness. And so just to take a quick look, our outputs, we've been doing this for about two years now. and. Um, I'm really proud of the growth we've seen and the number of programs we're offering as well as the attendance that we're seeing, especially among the, the six targeted branches um, who are doing, you know, a third of the programming and that, you know, it's increased threefold in both our um, program, number of programs and attendance over the last, from first year to second year, um, that we've increased that much. And then lastly, looking at our outcomes, because it's always important to be looking at, you know, is this making a meaningful impact? Um, do people like what we're doing? So we did develop a survey from the beginning um, to assess some of these questions and um, have found that there's been 
you know, good satisfaction with the programs we're offering, um, that people want to come back to more programs. Um, I get excited by the number of percentage of people who are hoping to make or intend to make a health behavior change based on what they learned. And this data that I pulled is specifically from classes uh, related to physical activity. And when I looked back in and looked at for people who said it was their first time coming and they were at a physical activity program, that it was actually 90% of people intended to make a health change. So just the fact that they're going to this class learning something new um, and showing that, you know, maybe that they'll incorporate more movement into their their life moving forward. And then most important to us is, is seeing what's the accessibility. Um, did people report that because it was free, because the location was conveniently in their neighborhood, that the environment was safe, um, that they felt it was easier for them to come. And so 98% reporting that accessibility was uh, part of that decision. So thank you. My main really take home point is to know, you know, what are the health priorities where you live, um, being in line with, with what your city or town or region is doing, um, finding out what the need and interest is of your community members, leveraging partners that are already doing that work in the community, and really just inserting yourself as a library um, into these public health conversations, showing up to your health department meetings, um, you know, local government conversations on health, um, just making the library be, be a part of that and showing how we, um, you know, we reach a large population, we reach a large population in need, and, um, you know, how can, how can we keep uh, having libraries be part of that conversation? So if anyone has any questions, that was a real rush through presentation, but uh, go for it. Great. Uh, thanks again, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, that was great. Um, and yeah, apologies again for the time zone confusion. Uh, feel free to put some uh, questions in the chat box, and I already see some coming in. Um, but first, uh, Elizabeth, I actually wanted to ask you a question that was asked of Jamie. Um, and uh, I think you may have an interesting response uh, uh, because we talked about this a little bit. Um, with your yoga and other physical activity programs, have they all been led by outside presenters or do the library staff themselves lead some of the, the physical activity programs? Yes, we have one staff person that does a weekly yoga because she happens to be a certified yoga teacher. We also have a staff person that teaches a monthly Qigong class, which is a Chinese martial arts movement. Um, but for the most part, it is outside programmers. And that is a conversation that I have thought of having as, you know, almost sending out a question to, you know, we have close to 400 staff people. You know, is anyone certified in, a, in an, you know, a fitness class? Is this something that would interest you? Um, so it's a question that hasn't been asked yet, but we do have a few at this time, just on their personal interest they wanted to teach. And Elizabeth, just a quick follow-up from the earlier conversation with the people who do the qigong and the yoga who are staffed, are they paid extra or are they, is it just come out of their regular staff, yeah, um, it's considered staff work time. time salary? Okay. Yeah, that was just something that we were talking about earlier. Um, I have a question now from the audience. Um, uh, so we have a question, uh, Elizabeth and Jamie, if either of you have any thoughts on this. Um, uh, do you have any advice for smaller or rural communities um, in identifying community health needs? Um, um, I mean, for me, this is Elizabeth, I would say, again, checking in with your, re you know, your regional health department, um, finding out what, um, finding out what they're focusing on, as well as um, if you have a hospital network, usually they will have done uh, a community health needs assessment, and you could link into that as well to find out what some of those health priority areas are. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's, a, that's a great, great point to tap into your, your regional or county health department. Um, excellent. Uh, any other questions for Elizabeth or Jamie?
Yeah, so um, uh, if people are, are waiting to ask a question, um, uh, Jamie had talked a little bit about um, in her presentation about uh, the uh, also a project that was grant funded and, and some of the things that they're thinking about doing in Sonoma County um, as the grant kind of winds up. Um, and Elizabeth, I wondered kind of with your project, um, uh, what are what are some of the sustainability elements that uh, you all will have to, to deal with in terms of um, keeping the momentum going and, and the funding going as well? Sure. I mean, for for National Public Library, um, the grant that we received from Blue Cross was a three-year grant, and the end of 2018 will be the end of that grant. Um, we have had some extra money from local hospital system and healthcare company, but my intention with again, finding these partners in the community was a way to build in that sustainability um, that these partners, the larger partners I mentioned, they function, their, function under their own grants and are providing this service um, to meet their grant needs. And so it's a way to do it for us much more affordably and to know that, you know, that that can last after um, this money runs out or if this money is less, as opposed to just solely relying on paid paid programming. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Kind of using the, the grant funding as kind of a catalyst building partnerships that uh, will kind of endure beyond uh, beyond the life cycle of the grant. Uh, that's, that's great to hear. Um, and I'm not seeing anything on the chat, um, so um, not to put you on the spot, Jamie, but Jamie, uh, kind of listening to Elizabeth's presentation, do you have any, any questions for Elizabeth or any, any thoughts you want to share? Um, no, I'm just very impressed. And I've looked at um, what Nashville's been doing for some time now, and I appreciate them being a leader in regard to health literacy. I think it's fantastic. And, I look forward to more, you know, public and academic libraries doing these kinds of programs. I think it's really important work. Great, thanks, Jamie. Um, and I, I, I'm equally impressed. Uh, and Elizabeth, um, not to put you on the spot, but your background is in public health. Is that is that correct? Yes, I had worked in a hospital system in a community health department for a number of years, um, and then left that role. And actually, when I saw this job posting, um, once I had moved to Nashville and saw a job posting for a community health position in a library, I thought, how amazing. I mean, that's truly community health work. I never thought, I never thought I'd see something like that, um, but I just, it really shows, I think, the creativity and forward thinking of this library system um, of how libraries are key players in public health. So it's really been a pleasure and um, to, just so important, I think, to be doing this this kind of work in a library. And I think it's just going to continue to be more and more normal um, for this to be happening. But I was I was really shocked and excited when I saw this job posting. Great, great. Yeah, that's that's really really inspiring. And I'm I, I'm I'm hoping that uh, moving forward there will be a lot more kind of cross pollination between public health, um, community health, and, and public libraries. There's lots of opportunities, and uh, as as Jamie and Elizabeth testify, also lots of amazing uh, things going on. Uh, so I'm not seeing any more questions come in, and I do apologize again for the technical difficulties. I think we had a number of people. Uh, that we're having trouble with the audio. Um, and so just as a reminder, uh, the, the recording will be available to you. Um, and I also want to um, uh, say that Elizabeth, um, I, and I'm not sure if Jamie, I should have asked Jamie this question as well, but I know Elizabeth is going to be um, at the PLA pre-conference Stand Up For Your Health um, uh, at um, at uh, the PLA Public Library Association Conference in Philadelphia, so you can look for her there um, if you want to um, uh, follow up with any questions. Um, uh, but ho and this is Elizabeth's contact information. Um, and uh, and let me see. Uh, I don't. Let me see if I can find Jamie's slide really quickly. Um, but if you want to reach out to um, uh, Elizabeth or Jamie, feel free to do so. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing some people thanking you both for your time. Um, 
and uh, look for your email for um, information about the next webinar. Um, please email with uh, any ideas, comments, suggestions. Um, and you can watch some of our past webinars if you want uh, to learn more about uh, library backpack programs, bicycles, yoga, parachute play, um, and a whole lot more. Um, and if your library is moving, we would love to feature your story. Uh, reach out to me. Um, and uh, thank you again to everyone for your time. Uh, and until next time, thanks again. Um, and uh, good luck with your programs. Goodbye.